a lot of times you don't see that. Obviously, you don't see it in football and baseball yep. and basketball. Yep. Uh, John, um, look, uh, five championships at Kawasaki, uh, a real good legacy there. Uh, uh, you know, obviously, all the things that have been going on. You could have stayed there. Uh, you didn't jump to Star Yamaha for the money. You 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 went there for uh, you know a chance at a, 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 a equipment change that would propel Eli. I was not in the camp, John, of this is going to make Eli a better rider because he's getting older, and you know this kind of stuff doesn't happen in our sport. And so I commend you and Eli, Kathy, everybody for this. I don't even know if it was a gamble, Johnny, but. Uh, this is really. This is really. Look, it's a long way to go. We're only halfway through this thing, but man, you guys were looking for something different, and uh, and you did it. And it's a bit of a risk, and it's really working out. So uh, I guess take us through that a little bit, and and how stoked you got to be at this so far. How this thing is working? Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a gamble. We could have stayed at Cali, and yep, and Eli could have cashed his check, and you know, and wrote it out, but. Um, you know, we wanted to advance the ball and, uh, you know, Eli felt like he had more in the tank, you know, as far as mm-hmm. results go. And, um, we had, you know, in order to, in order to, um, kind of change it up on the equipment side, we had to make the move, you know, and, and we pushed, you know, I pushed the Cali guys pretty hard that last season to, to take some pretty big swings at changing some of the stuff we had on the bike. And, yep. They just wouldn't go to where we wanted to go and try things. And, and, you know, we had a certain amount of success there, but, you know, we wanted to try to really push the envelope and they, they were just too conservative. Mm -hmm. So, well, I mean, that's, that's how I'm going to say it. They were too conservative. Um, And I'll leave it at that. Well, I, you know, listen, I think when you talk to Villa Poto has been in here a bunch. Yeah. Jake Weimer has been in here a bunch. There's a window that they feel their bike works in. And they don't want to go outside that window. I think many guys have talked about that, and I think you're sort of getting to that. And that's fine. You know, it worked. You won five championships. So, you know, I don't, I'm not taking this as anything like it, where you guys are being negative towards Kawasaki. But the 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 chance of, yeah, hey, we want to go to Star and have more control, you guys knocked it out of the park so far. <laughs> it was well, like, oh, yeah. Is, is, you know, I mean, if you look at these guys, right, these Supercross athletes, mm-hmm. it's a gnarly sport, you know. Um they, they, it's a high level of risk. And, and when you're at the top, you're like, you know, I spend my whole freaking life taking risks yeah. and I want, I want to, I want to take a risk on this bike setting, you know, let's do it. Let's right. try to make this thing. Let's try to advance this, you know, program. Um, you know, do you want to take that risk? And I felt like, and Eli felt like, you know, yeah. they weren't going to do it. So. Wow. Yeah. Uh, why the star guys? Was it like, uh, Ricky Gilmore, obviously, Kiefer, you worked with Ricky yeah. on KYB stuff, so you've known for a while, and Ricky was with you guys at the Geico team. Ricky and KYB led you to star to the Yamaha, John, do you think? Was that sort of uh, where the where the, the things got well, put that together? Was, that was very important. Yeah. Very really important. We worked yep. with Ricky at Geico with Honda, and we had Dave Arnold with us there. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were Geico. We weren't factory Honda when Eli was on the 450. Right. right. So – we got some factory Honda support, um, especially on the motor side, but in electronics and things, and and, and a lot of actually data and help from Japanese engineers. Um, and we did a lot of work to that bike to get him to where he was in 15 in motocross. Um, that was a ground up project, kind of led by Dave, and yeah. Billy was deeply involved with with Dave and with the um, Honda engineers. So. Um, this is going to, I'm going to kind of take you through this and it might take a minute, but yeah, no, it'll kind of be an abbreviated version of it. But um, we did a lot of testing, a lot of work, and um, we got that thing in a really, really good spot. But that being said, um, we didn't have great Supercross success, you know, mm-hmm. and um, we wanted to ride it the newer generation frame that we had worked on with Honda a little bit, mm-hmm. but we couldn't race it, you know, because of the, because of the rules. Right. Um, and we wanted a factory, Eli wanted a factory edition bike so he could race this new frame in 16 and Honda's like, we can't do it. You know, and Eli's like, I'm not racing that fr- that other frame another year. So that's how he ended up on Cowie. Okay. So, yeah. Um, 
And uh, we took Gilmore with us to Cowie, and then a couple months into that deal, you know, the results weren't great, and so Cowie let Gilly go, and that was a that was a pretty big blow to us. You right. Know, and there wasn't. I mean, we could have jumped up and down and thrown a fit, but at that point, it's. I don't know. We felt like we kind of needed to take it on the chin for the team and and see if it would work out. And mm-hmm. the thing with Gilmore and Eli is they have a special communication. And when Eli says something about the motorcycle, Gilly knows what he's what Eli's talking about. Like, and he knows how to. If Eli tells him it's doing this, Gilmore knows in his brain what he needs to do to the fork or to the shock or to the bike to to deal with that right. particular you know issue on the motorcycle. So we lost that, you know. Yep. Um, so, you know, then we just kind of went our, went down the road with the Cali with how they wanted to do it. And then um, and then when this last contract was up, you know, we wanted to try to get back to um, to working with Gilmore if we could. So, yeah. And uh, he was working with the Yamaha. And you guys, I think it was pretty apparent how much progress he was making with the Yamaha. Yeah. That, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, so. I think he proved, you know, his value there. And But we already knew he had it in him. He just, you know, hadn't been in the program that allowed right. him to have that success yet. So, um, Yeah, I, and you got to feel vindicated. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Kiefer. Uh, just going with what John said, it makes me feel really happy inside when I hear John talk about um, there's a certain connection. When you – when I, I've been testing many, many years. Right. You have to – you're only good, as good as – your suspension tech or the engineer or whoever you're working with and you guys have to meet it's almost like a marriage where you have to understand each other and learn how one another speaks and that person has to know what you're talking about because there's testing terms as a rider that you must talk about when Mm -hmm. you ride and if a rider doesn't know those specific terms that engineers know it's hard to talk our language to Mm -hmm. guys that may or may not ride and what's awesome about Gilly is he has the engineer mind, right? but he also rides dirt bikes. So he gets both sides of it. Mm-hmm. And, and in our industry, that is fucking rare. It's Very super rare. rare. Yep. Yeah. So to have someone like Gilly and Eli bond and do that, it's, it's very hard to keep that through your whole career. So mm-hmm. it's nice that they found each other. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Go ahead, John. Gilly's ridden out here, you know, with us at our place. And he actually was Eli's practice mechanic for a little while. And then, um, and then he started working with uh, Geico after that. Right. So. And and even having said that about Kawasaki, look at Jason right now. He's riding. He went to Kawasaki, and he's riding better than he has in years, Correct. too. So he has felt the new people over there. And, he could and, gel with someone and, over and, there. Yeah, like, somebody over that... there is, is working well with Jason, right? Yeah. So it's – it's There's uh, a human yeah. element yeah. involved in all of this, right? right? right. So. Uh, well, the other okay. thing, too, is certain – you know, there's riders that – Eli has a very unique style. Like nobody, nobody's going to be harder on the throttle than him. Yeah. Right? Nobody's going to be harder on the brakes than Eli. So, from a perspective of a tuner, when Eli comes on board, they've never seen what he does from any other rider. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a good point. We had the Japanese engineer out here one time, and they they had a throttle sensor on there. And he's like, "Okay, let's go do some moto laps." <laughs> and the guy comes back to the shop, downloads the the data and he's like oh my god and like what's up and he's like oh 90 percent wide open whole lap never seen this before <laughs> yeah well yep. we had Entignap in here one time and he was talking about eli coming up behind him and he was just like dude He's just wide open. You can tell it's Eli Tomac every single time. Yeah, it's like a monster coming to get right. you. It's like a monster coming to get yeah. you when he's lapping you or coming by you. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's been uh, it's been good. Did you think, John, that it would take some time, or have you been, you know, your four wins in, we're halfway, we're nine down, nine rounds down, four win, four wins in, a points lead. Did you think it would come this quick, watching in preseason what what uh, the star guys and Gilly and Eli could do, or were you thinking it was going to take some time? Uh, he looked good preseason, yeah. But you know, we we've, we've had a lot of good preseasons. Okay, yeah. And we've right. had a lot of miserable first five or six weeks yep. of Supercross. So, yep. Um, and I always keep that in. I, like I've seen it so many times, I'm just like, yeah, yeah. He looks good now, but we have to go racing, and it's crazy how much you learn. The first couple rounds, yeah, so, yeah, um, 
Um, and then you got to tune it, you know, you got to tune it to the race condition and, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, and, and make it work. So speaking of which, but, uh, okay. that's one thing with, you know, like with this team is if something's, if we, if we want to try something, we can try it and, and they'll, they'll take those big swings. They're not scared. So, I mean, they're not, I think and, because they're, you know, they're factory supported, but not a factory yeah. team, mm-hmm. like they're answering to themselves, you know, they don't have to go explain to the, head of marketing you know right why they put you know, yeah, why why, the, yeah why the engine blew up or the shock blew up because they you know they put some crazy setting in there <laughs> uh well and you know what's funny is i i worked th- for three and a half years at factory yamaha and it was the same old crew and we were really conservative on what we could do mm-hmm. and there was a total conservatism and that's why chad got you know kind of mad and went to L M at one point and it's funny it's, it's the same manufacturer but different people and different everything and now they're open to do whatever. It's just so funny to me because Yamaha was in that box for yeah. so long. Um, oh, for sure, you could see it. You know, you yeah. see it with the with those factory teams. It's um, yeah, especially with the Japanese because the Japanese are conservative by nature with their business dealings. So yep, um, they want to keep things within a certain parameter, which keeps them safe from making big mistakes. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's in their culture. Yeah. Sure, I, sure. I would tell you, I would tell you a really funny story about testing with Shimano and. <laughs> on uh, some R&D products that, and I was with the the chief of R&D at Shimano, and and he had a table in his office, and and I'm in there, you know, with the other guys from the U.S. and we're like, what's that table over there? Mm-hmm. And this is like a you know 65 year old Japanese executive, and he's like, those are all the Shimano project pro- uh, products that have failed, and will stay in my office forever. <laughs> <laughs> Every day he wakes up and looks at the failures. Yeah. Oh, and he's that, like it's not wow. going to happen. Right. <laughs> um, and speaking of which, the uh, Eli's bike started steaming there, and then he did his burnout afterwards. And I'm oh, like, that thing was puking. I'm out like, that after. thing is not going to last through this burnout, but it did. Blue crew. Yeah, Blue I, crew. I saw. Actually, my my other son Greg's like, is this bike smoking? I was like, no, it's just sand. Mm-hmm. And then he came back by through the whoops, and I'm like, oh god, I think it's smoking. You know? <laughs> oh yeah. But then, you know, the guys on the radio are like, no, it's it's water, it's no problem, it'll yeah. make it easy. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So once they said that, I was like, yeah, it's good. But we've had really, really good luck um, with our new clutch system. So um, yeah, hey, cable. That's, that's another thing with Eli. He uses the clutch, and he he uses it as a tool. Um, yep. The, and a lot of guys don't use a clutch as a tool anymore. Eli's one of the few guys left that will use the clutch to control the motorcycle a lot of the time. Um, so he well, has we, to have that thing right. We know? got we got Alex Ray here. That's, that's all he knows how to do, John, is we're always telling him, stop pulling in the clutch. And just get, hold the fucking thing wide open and just no, finger bang it. Well, you can't. You can't, Avery. It's not working for you. It's working for Eli. Oh, man, I come off the track. Freaking thing smoked. Whatever, yeah, you know. um... My dad would always put an extra steel in the middle of my clutch because I'd go through clutches so right. much. Oh, but we, we, didn't, we didn't have enough money growing up. You know, I mean, I raced, I grew up in Eli's class. I raced like a lot of the amateur stuff with Eli. But like my dad would always just put a steel, like a steel plate right in the yeah. middle to just tighten well, everything up. And what, just tighten her down. Yeah, you're what, good to go for another minute. What John just said doesn't help our case, John, because we've been telling Alex for years please let your clutch out. Your bike is, you're blowing up your bike, A Ray. But no. Nah. So, so now, now he's going to keep well, doing it. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm doing the same thing Eli's doing. You know, I'm hey, we're using it as a tool. Right. <laughs> Go ahead, John. Yep. <laughs> you can abuse it, or you can use it properly. So. Yeah. Uh, no, it's uh, it's been good. It. Uh, I was True I've been saying this on my show, John. Like, uh, you know, I'm around the Cowie guys a lot um, before the COVID stuff, and and uh, and Eli, you know, he's a he's a serious guy. He's funny, but he's serious. And then I think at times. Like I wasn't his favorite media guy, so we kind of went through a stage where we weren't talking too much. And now I, I talked to him at A1, and you tell me if I'm wrong or not, but he seems so much happier. Eli Tomac himself, your son, seems laughing, seems happy. The press conferences, he's I, – I just – you know, I, I don't know if it was just the Kawasaki thing, but he seems like he's a, in a better mood. He's a father now, obviously, and all that. But, man, he seems like a different guy the last uh, this year compared to the last few years. Yeah, he's definitely happier. Yep. I mean, I, I just think he was really frustrated, um, you know, and it, with the bike a lot of times. Right, right. Before. So, yeah, he seems. Like if, uh, if you feel yeah. like you're, like something is limiting you and you can't, and you can't improve yourself mm-hmm. um, because of it, 
and you're in his position, it can be incredibly frustrating, incredibly frustrating. Right. Uh, yeah, I can and, imagine. And you yeah. see it. You see it. I mean, there's all. I mean, we all know how many good guys there are out there, right? You know. And yeah. I mean, look at Cooper. He obviously he's a really good rider, and they had a new model, and it looks like they're working out the bugs, but they weren't dialed in. And you don't think that dude's frustrated because mm-hmm. his bike's not working mm-hmm. the way he wants it to work? Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, it happens. Yep. So. No, absolutely. You're right. Well, we got some phone calls for you here. Uh, John Tomac brought to you by the folks at Skosh. Uh, 